Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. And this question comes from three people asking more or less the same question, and it's a great question. So the first user is Tao Li, and he asks, this channel has helped me greatly in my journey to become an engineer. Thanks for all of the insightful information. My question is, what are some of the most valuable skill sets as an engineer? Is there any area that is more valuable than another, like routing, switching, security, data center, and voice? Another user named LibrinGuy01, I hope I pronounced that correctly, he said, um, hey Michael, bought your Ultimate Training Collection and loving it as I go through the various technology videos. I already have a CCIE invoice with some years of experience. Congratulations, by the way. And I want to check if it is better to go for CCIE in security or CCNP in security, plus some Juniper, plus some FortiGate, plus some Palo Networks, etc. Along with a good routing and switching and data center knowledge. Any other ideas are welcome. Another question from Futang, and his question is, what about cloud engineering? Cisco has a new certification or security. Is that still the best route? At the end of the day, you got to do what you're good at and what you love. Still, what about cloud? So the main question asked is what is more valuable as a specialization or as an expertise? Is it routing and switching? Is it security? Is it day center or is it voice? So let's talk more about that in this episode. Okay, so let me cut to the chase. Everyone starts out with routing and switching for a background. And when I talk about routing, I'm talking about the IGP routing protocol, specifically OSPF and EIGRP. You have to master that. In terms of EGP, we're talking about BGP, the external routing protocol that connects with several ISP networks for advertising the networks that you may have to other networks on the internet itself. You have to master that. When we talk about routing, not just with routing itself, but we're talking about multicast, quality of service, and IPv6. When we talk about switching, we're talking about VLANs, trunking, um, BTP, spanning tree. All of this makes up routing and switching, but that is basically where you begin and what you must have as a network engineer. And that's important because everything else relies on that foundation for routing and switching. Now we get into voice and security. And luckily there is a dedicated episode for Ask the Network Engineer that I talk about exactly that. What is more valuable, voice or security? So check out that video for more details and the examples that I provide. But long story short, security is more valuable and there are a lot more opportunities for that out there in the market. And that kind of makes sense. Security is something that can make or break a business. You're talking about data loss. You're talking about availability. You're talking about the leaking of your data that could be exposed. So companies of all sizes, whether it's a two person company or a 10,000 plus environment or a service provider, having next generation security is important. We're talking about filtering of not just policies, but filtering within the applications that are used. We're talking about security with identity control, confirming that you are who you are and what access you can have based on the group that you are a part of. We're talking about website control, blocking of viruses, spyware, email filtering. Security has a lot more moving parts and is very critical for a business to maintain. Where with voice, voice has been pretty static in my opinion. I don't get a lot of different projects in regards to that. I remember Cisco Unified Communication version 8, long time ago. Now, right now, at the time of this recording, it is at version 11. And from version 8 to version 11, there has been very minimal features added to it that's groundbreaking. So when I see collaboration out there or Unified Communications, and this is beyond just voice calls and voicemail. This is beyond that like, like presence and call center and that sort of thing. That's really for larger, larger environments. And again, it's pretty static. Again, I talk about this in more detail in that video of voice versus security, so definitely check that out. But 
between voice and security. Voice is something, oh, sorry, security. Security is something that is strongly valuable that a network engineer should definitely have under their belt. And then we have data center. So data center as an area of what to specialize in, it is the most valuable area compared to the other areas that I have covered so far in this episode. It is highly in demand if you have the right skills and the right experience. So why is that? When we talk about a data center, we gotta take a step back and explain what is the use case? Why is this important? Well, from a user perspective or from a company perspective, there's two words, cloud computing. Cloud computing that can allow companies to move their services, their applications from their own network, from their data center, and push it up to the cloud, to the internet, to some other company that can manage all of the maintenance, the updates, the patching, um, the power, the cooling, um, cabling, and so forth. They would manage all of that, and they can allow a company to stay focused and to build their business. These are terms, these are conversations that business owners, management likes to hear, saving money, how can they grow their business, return on investments, that sort of thing. So that's basically what cloud computing is providing companies. And I've been a big part of that for a lot of my own clients. They're, they're basically needing assistance of moving their infrastructure up to the cloud. When we talk about things like software as a service, a SaaS or infrastructure as a service, that's all part of a cloud computing environment. When we talk about um, various companies out there like Amazon Web Services, um, there is um, Dropbox, for example, there is Office 365. This is part of a cloud computing providers that are offering these type of services to companies that do not need to have these servers on premise at their location. But guess what? Cloud computing is just the fancy word that we tell business owners or marketing or people to understand what this stuff means. But a cloud computing environment, it is all based on a data center environment. That data center, that topology, the services, the technologies that are involved to make up a cloud computing environment. When we talk about a data center, we're talking about data center switches like the Cisco Nexus 7000, 5000, the 2000 series, even the 9000 series, depending on the bandwidth requirements for that data center. And speaking of bandwidth, we're talking about not just 10 gig ethernet, but 40 gig and 100 gig ethernet for these environments. Remember, this is a hosted cloud providing environment that will be basically providing services, network connectivity for thousands of potential clients that are using them for cloud services. You're looking at things such as data center technologies. Technology is very specific on one data center communicating with other data centers. And we call those interconnects or data center interconnects or DCI. And some of these technologies or protocols are things like OTV, VXLAN, um, Fabric Path, and LISP. Those are type of protocols used for enhancing the capability or extending network services like VLANs between the different data centers that exist. And of course, there is a lot of job opportunities out there when it comes to being a data center engineer or a data center architect. Now the title may also be a cloud engineer or a cloud architect. That also is basically the same thing. So as a recap, you have routing and switching, voice, security, and data center as what is valuable and the amount of opportunities that exist. So remember, we all start out with the foundation, which is routing and switching. That is a requirement. If you don't know that, then you're not going to be even considered for anything higher like security and with um, data center. So after a couple years of doing routing and switching, being a network engineer, then you can consider things like voice or security. That typically what comes up as your next decision. And security is typically um, chosen as that path. Voice is very different. Uh, switching or sorry, security, there are a lot of similarities within the routing and switching world. So that's pretty common. Data center is definitely a advanced specialty within the networking field. I've seen a lot of 
requirements for five, 10 years of experience just for data center work. So really, you wanna kinda of work your way up being a network engineer, doing routing and switching, and security. That's what I would probably recommend to most people um, for being a network engineer and what your next step should be. Then from there, then you can definitely tackle and do the data center work. Get the training, get the training, get familiar with all the data center technologies and the protocols, do the labs, get that experience though. So if you have routing and switching and if you're doing security, then you can also be doing the data center work. And if your job has data center kind of responsibilities, then you'll be involved with that. And that would give you the experience of that kind of work. And we are done with this episode. So thank you very much for those great questions. And I hope that it helps. But also keep in mind that we have other videos that I talked about different job titles. And I also talked about different technology skill sets that you should keep in mind if you have interest in security or a data center or voice. I talk a lot about that. So make sure to watch all the videos in this series to get the full extent and information that can help you to become a network engineer and how you be a network engineer. Furthermore, we are in the process of developing a training package, a video series for Cisco data center services for implementing, configuring the Nexus 7000, the 5000 series, and the different features and protocols in a practical environment. So you can check out our website, routehub.net, for more details of when we'll be releasing that package, and we'll keep you guys updated on our social media sites on our progress. And we wanna hear from you guys. You guys ask a lot of great questions, please keep them coming. So post your questions below in the comments about anything in the networking field or being a network engineer and your question will come up in a future video. So thank you for watching this video. Please like this video. Please subscribe to our channel. That helps us out a lot. And check out our practical training on our site, routehub.net, where we do a lot of training on practical step-by-step -step for various solutions and services. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.